Chris and Chris Talk Movies. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Chris Ferry and of course this is my co-host. I am another Chris. I am Chris Huddleston. And today we are very excited to be talking to you about the Robert Zemeckis comedy. I don't even know how to label this movie. I guess a comedy. Horror comedy. Comedy horror. horror. Comedy. Death becomes her. Do you have a synopsis for us, Mr. Hoddleston? I do. So as you said, this was directed by Robert Zemeckis. And it stars Meryl Streep, Bruce Willis, Goldie Hawn, Isabella Rossellini. And Rossellini. When a novelist loses her man to a movie star and former friend, she winds up in a psychiatric hospital. Years later, she returns home to confront the now married couple looking radiant. Her ex-husband's new wife wants to know her secret and discovers that she has been taking a mysterious drug which grants eternal life to the person who drinks it. The actress follows suit, but discovers that immortality has a price. So had yeah. you had you previously, that's not a bad description. Had you previously seen this and what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking an Upside Dawn by Athletic Brewing Company. It is a non-alcoholic beer. Oh, that's delicious. I saw this when I was a kid, and I, mm-hmm. I realized rewatching it as an adult that uh, a lot of it would have just gone squarely over my head as a kid, which I think I did. I mean, I think I, I think I think there's stuff that uh, is clearly supposed to be funny mm-hmm. that I still don't find. I mean, I get it, and I'm not gonna hate on it, but it didn't make me laugh. I, I didn't. It didn't really. A lot of the the bits didn't really land with me, and I want to get into why in a minute. But so I think as a kid, you know, my kid sense of humor was expecting, you know slapstick yuck yuck yucks or something and felt let down by that but there's a lot about um we've mentioned before Zemeckis is sort of likes to send up Hollywood itself and uh he's a plastic the husband's a plastic surgeon and these are people in LA who want to look forever young and there's just a lot of LA social um trope stuff at work in this movie that uh that i think would have gone completely past me as a kid and that wouldn't have made any sense this this movie is interesting to watch because most people think of bruce willis you know when bruce willis dies the first thing they're going to say is die hard right um that's what he's known for but our first uh exposure to him would have been the show moonlighting he was one of those guys who could who could do uh action and do dramatic roles but man he is a great comedic actor he he, i think he's really all three of them are really good in this you know you have uh meryl streep who most people are not going to think comedy with her you know you're going to think dramatic roles um uh, you know, in, in, in saying uh, Meryl Streep is a genius is hardly uh, a daring comment, right? I think right. America, the world appreciates what a cinematic treasure Meryl Streep is by by this point. But, um, you know, when you see her in material like this, um, I just I every time I saw her on screen every single take she did i bet and i didn't do my homework on this but i bet that's her really singing the two women have a long standing uh friend kind of rivalry yeah, yeah friend of friend of me situation yeah. they hate each other right um yeah so the other we should say is goldie hahn goldie hahn who who again sort of the the reverse of meryl streep you know, she's always been viewed as kind of a comedic actress, though she's done, you know, some dramatic roles there. But uh, all three of them, I think, are great. I mean, this is pretty slapsticky, broad kind of comedy, but I, I think they all do a great job with it. Yeah. And and since you mentioned that, I mean, so so one thing is, you know, Goldie Hawn, Hollywood actresses are good looking, but there mm-hmm. are moments in this that I was just really struck by how 
um, stunning Goldie Hawn is. Like she has almost Betty Davis eyes. She has these remarkable eyes. You know, I like Bruce Willis. I didn't, I didn't feel like him playing the sort of uptight. I, I didn't, this was not a role in which I felt he shined. I, I guess I just felt like I wanted more. I, I could have, because uh, the other, the two women um, were having such fun uh, chewing the furniture that I wanted to see Bruce Willis have more fun chewing the furniture. I wanted more. Yeah. Most of the, I would say most of the uh, laughs that I got in this were from Bruce Willis. Like the one line that actually made me laugh out loud is so he he uh, he pushes Meryl Streep down the stairs and then that's when she breaks her neck and her head's on backwards and all that. She's dead. She has no pulse. And then he he calls Goldie Hawn, you know, what are we going to do? And then that's when she she gets up and he he takes her to the hospital and the doctor is played by Sidney Pollack is the actor. Oh, Sidney Pollack, of course. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's a it's a physical relief. <laughs> um, uh, so Sidney Pollack is the doctor that scene I thought that did make me laugh out loud yeah know. just he's trying to be hale and hearty and make sense of all this you know but uh, <laughs> she's dead it's he's just like this goes against everything you know I believe and Isabella uh, Rossellini playing 70 something but oh and she's gorgeous oh my god she's gorgeous and you know and she she convinces uh Meryl Streep to drink this glowing pink potion that is the potion of life. And as soon as she gulps it down, she sort of glows and she goes, ah, and there's a <laughs> says, now a warning. Is <laughs> <laughs> like, now you warn me? Now a warning? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to love in it. Um, I, I'm not sure. <sighs> you know, I kind of feel like it's like sometimes you'll make a chili or a soup or something like that and you'll eat it and it's good it's good but it's better the next day because all the flavors have kind of come together and blended and there's a depth of all of the different flavors that have melded together do you know what i'm talking mm -hmm. about oh sure um and i i almost feel like this is um first day chili where you're like there's mm -hmm. lots of love in this but it didn't it didn't quite come together in a way that I saw that it meant to. I'd say I pretty much felt, I mean, my my uh, feelings were similar. I maybe liked it more than you did. I remember not loving this movie the first time I saw it um, and just thinking it was was pretty good, but but not great. So I had, you know, not super high expectations going in, but I really, really enjoyed this this time. Now, I I definitely, you know, I have nostalgia for, movies from this time and, and, you know, movies that I have, have not seen, or it's been a long time uh, since I've seen from this period, early nineties, I really enjoy revisiting. So there's some of that. Um, but it kind of, I, you know, it's, it's a hard balance to strike, but the really good uh, horror comedies I'm a big fan of. So things like, uh, you know, American Werewolf in London or uh, Shaun of the Dead. Um, you know, those are two of the best ever, but uh, it's it's a genre when when they hit, I really, really enjoy. He's a really, really great director. And this film looks great. The, the look of it is excellent. And it's, you know, it's really w well directed in terms of the cinematography and the yeah the you know we don't uh this would have been a pretty significant budget i would imagine or it looks pretty expensive yeah so we don't get a lot of big budget horror comedies um especially now i mean it's not just something that you really too much think of as like hey this is a genre that people are going to rush out to the theater for